In this Northern Brewer video, it's tricks and treats as we pair craft beer with classic Halloween candy. What's going on everybody? It's Chip and Abby from Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply. We are here at Arbiter Brewing, which is closed at the moment, or as we'd like to say, haunted. <laughs> with Aaron Herman, head brewer at Arbiter. Howdy. By the way, best new brewery in Minnesota. Hey so you'd think that we'd come and pick his brain about technique and style and get really in depth about his brewing process. Boring. Nah. nah. We're here to throw a bunch of candy his way and see if we can't pair some of our biters' beers with classic Halloween candy. Well, we've got his five beers lined up off the taps right behind us. Some of the most notoriously popular slash divisive, in some cases, Halloween treats. <laughs> We're gonna dig in right now. First up, Bee Sting versus Candy Corn. <laughs> Woo, Candy Corn. Versus, you mean with Candy Corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what is Bee Sting? Bee Sting is a, um, it's a beer inspired by a German cake of the same name. Um, don't ask me how to pronounce it in German, but in English it's pronounced Bee Sting. Um, it is a, <clears throat> a vanilla honey cream ale, essentially. Uh, the cream part comes from it. It does have lactose in it because the cake itself has like a like a vanilla cream like frosting in between the layers of like thick uh, yeast cake and then it has it's like typically like slivered almonds on top of the cake with like a honey drizzle sort of deal going on I'm, yeah so I made a beer version of that cake nice and I'm, now I'm eating now I'm drinking it with candy <laughs> corn <laughs> so I chose candy corn because it has a lot of those kind of like rich mouthfeel lactose vibes, honey yeah. is literally an ingredient. So I guess we should say sometimes beer pairing is about complimenting, but sometimes it's also about clashing. So I guess oh we'll goodness. we'll give our thoughts <laughs> on if they clash or compliment. Definitely diminishes the sweetness of the beer because the candy corn is so dang sweet. <laughs> yeah. So it brings um, out the other components. It kind of washes out like the subtle like sweetness you get from um, the, the lactose and the honey itself, like the honey flavor. It almost tastes um, kind of pilsnery now. Yeah, like hoppy pilsner exactly. a right, little bit. Right. <laughs> Abby, what do you think? I don't love candy corn, but I feel like having it with a beer that I like helps the candy corn go down. A little yeah. bit of sugar uh -huh. washes uh -huh. the medicine, yeah. helps yeah. the medicine go down. Second up, Ha Ha Pills and Butterfinger. What is Ha Ha Pills? Ha Ha Pills is a kind of a classic um, uh, Northern German pilsner. Pilsner, uh, spelled with an extra E in there. Um, fairly well attenuated, um, super light Pilsner malt, Hollertau middle fruit hops, super clean fermentation profile, you know, light, crisp, snappy, hoppy. It's funny you said snappy right as I bit mm. the Butterfinger, because the Butterfinger has the snappy, Snap, yeah. that flake, that kind of classic break inside of the chocolate. I picked these because I wanted to go, you know, Imperial Stout, it's obvious like chocolate and rich. But I was like, let's take at least one of these lighter beers yeah. and also put it up against chocolate. That's stinking. I also felt there'd be a good joke in there. Diacetyl, keep the butter in your finger, oh, not in your beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no diacetyl here, completely clean. Uh -huh. I like that, hmm. actually. The little bit of uh, the chocolate coating that kind of gets stuck in your yeah, molars, yeah. kind of gets like, worked in with that last bitter aftertaste mm -hmm. of the beer yeah That's i was gonna cool. say, i was gonna say it kind of amplifies the, the bitterness of the beer because again i think this like sweet and sweet is going to kind of cancel each other out mm -hmm. <clears throat> so whatever sweetness is going on in the beer the candy is just going to kind of erase that and you'll start tasting the other flavors in the beer more so because you're already your palate's already saturated with sweet like so. i wouldn't have thought to pair this would wow. not have been my thought mm -hmm. my choice to pair mm -hmm. these two but it works i'm gonna go on a limb and say this Surprise. might be my favorite but we've got three Surprise. more to go uh -huh. i definitely i think there's probably saltiness too we've got the bag over there with the info but i bet you money there's salt in the butterfinger that kind of oh, does that the like part. sure okay that yeah, like almost mm -hmm. like yeah because peanut butter always has in the salt. crunchy part yeah for totally yeah number three in the flight of five we are talking about pineapple jam meets starbursts what is pineapple jam pineapple jam is a lactose ipa like a low ibu um lactose I, I, uh, ipa 
uh, made with uh, Sultana hops, which are very pineapple forward in the first place, yeah. and uh, uh, pineapple pineapple puree at the end. So it's mm. literally just jam packed of, with pineapple flavor. It is. It mm -hmm. is super pineapple-y. It's like the juice, even. Mm -hmm. So we decided to kind of throw it up against some tropical fruit flavored Starburst. Side note, I have not eaten these in years because yeah, I don't know if my teeth can handle it. Right. Hold on, teeth. I'm going to hold on, teeth. Starburst, classic. Mm -hmm. Plastic fruit. Yep. I don't think there's a... I'm just going to speak on camera with my yep. mouth full. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait like minutes. Exactly, yeah. Goes away. Especially with this one. Dead air. <laughs> I don't think there's a pineapple Starburst. Mm. Whatever pink one, strawberry, tastes good with this. Nice. Well, I guess this will be a different experience for everybody. It will whatever be a little flavor, bit. Mm -hmm. Whatever flavor you got. I did orange. I feel like this is finishing even more bitter yeah. than the first uh, yeah. one did due I'm to not, that I'm not too wild canceling. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more sweet canceling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so by that logic, before we even move forward, what might chemically pair better with these really sweet... I guess we want a beer that finishes malty versus bitter probably, right? Because if you're going to remove the sweetness of something, you might want then the lingering flavor to be malt derived, whether it's caramelly, toffee, toasty. You're kind of like shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. A little bit. Or a beer that's not very sweet in the first place. Such as? Um, like a dry saison? That's not also bitter? Hmm. I'm not exactly sure. If you're a food scientist or work at a yeah. lab in a pro brewery let us know. <laughs> or a food uh, food recipe development, let us know. Till then, we're moving on. Beer number mm -hmm. four, Money Maker, making it rain on this Imperial Stout up against Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. How mm -hmm. classic. Yeah. And yeah. this is the one that I'm driving over. I was like, I wonder if this is the one that's going to ultimately make the least amount of sense, even though oh, right. you would think it makes the most sure, sense. Sure, sure. So, well, based tell on us what about we've seen so far. Uh, Moneymaker, yeah, it's just kind of like a classic uh, imperial stout. Um, big kind of baker's chocolate, mm. you know, some nice roasty uh, notes to it. Nothing too roasty over the top. It's clocks in at 12.6, so it's definitely a proper imperial stout. For 11 o'clock? Yeah. In the morning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock somewhere. I'm going to say it finishes with this nice roasty bitterness, but yeah. that could be coming on the heels of the Starburst as well. Like sure. tasting it right oh, now, yeah. do you feel like that's what it would taste like um, if you just took a there quick There might be sample? a little more roast character yeah. to it at the moment. Like a little more of like a dryness and a little bit more of like a malt, dark malt astringency to it at the moment. I will say Reese's is probably my favorite Halloween candy. I mean, Reese's peanut butter cups are kind of, ooh, can't go wrong. I know what I think pops out. It's the I only candy that comes say. out with a different shape for every holiday. Mm. So I feel like it's got to be everybody's favorite, mm -hmm. probably. <laughs> I mean, oh, like there's, bunnies. Like, there's like the Easter one, and there's like a oh, heart-shaped yeah. one. and True, true. So what? I know what jumped out right at me when I ate the candy and then had the beer. I want to see if the same thing happens to you. What element? It almost turned it from like dark chocolate or like baker's chocolate to like milk chocolate. For really? Me. It tastes... It kind of like softens... Definitely softened like the, the roastiness. At least that's what I got. I feel like the alcohol suddenly just like oh, it tastes hot. way it tastes okay. way different because I had a sip or two. I feel like it before tastes... the Reese's and it tastes so different. Like right after I had it, I feel like it tastes a little like rum raisin. Wow. Okay, I can this see one, that. Like, the alcohol really definitely changed. was like oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a whisper of a kiss. Kind of unexpected, but I do like it. Yeah, even on the second bite. I see what you're saying, though. It did get, it leans like way milk chocolatey. Mm -hmm. Like Hershey's melted already yeah. in the sun and then just like <laughs> yeah, right. licking it out of the paper. Mm -hmm. So beer number five, candy number five. We're talking Tropical AF up against Sour Patch Kids. Tropical AF stands for Tropical Acid Factory. Anytime we do, pretty much anytime we do anything um, sour, and in our case, it's pretty much always gonna be a kettle sour, uh, we're calling our sour line Acid Factory. And this is just an extremely tropical, very tart, uh, actually, version of, of, of a kettle sour. It's uh, about six and a half percent, if I remember right. Um, 
What are the fruits? Some, in this? Uh, yeah, mango and something else uh, in primary actually, and then uh, a passion fruit uh, flavoring in um, mm. to, to finish the beer. Before we combine them in our mouth, the beer itself dry. Night, I would say like medium tart, medium high, but medium tart, very mm -hmm. fruity. It's good tart. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I've had ones where I'm like, yeah, this oh, is not God. like teeth peeling. Yes, there are ones where you just, you like feel it if you have uh, fillings. fillings. Yeah. So you're like, oh, <laughs> it's like God. Rock our fillings out. We didn't really talk about whether it should be beer first and candy or candy right. and beer or both. The first thing that I thought was how this no longer tastes sour. At mm -hmm. least at first. To me, this almost tasted just like true. a jelly bean. That's true, right. Because mm -hmm. the tartness of the beer kind of like set primed. us up here. Mm -hmm. But now I'm getting it. But I don't know. I haven't yeah. had this candy like, in years to know if it's still I like, feel like it's good to try. It's good to have a sip of the beer, then have the candy, then another sip of the beer. I think you're right. Yeah. Because on some of them, it tasted so different after having the candy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you should do it that way. Is yep. like sandwich it between. Yeah. And I feel like any like formal sensory stuff I've ever done too, it's like, I forget if you're supposed to sip first or not, but yeah, always like drink the beer after your, um, uh, Try you know, color. taste buds have been barraged with some asked, other I flavor. Like, color. I know. They all, yeah. just, they all just taste like, oh, I chose yeah. orange. <laughs> Sour candy. They don't really have much of a flavor, I don't think. When I let it hang out in my mouth first and let all that kind of wear off of it, the candy was noticeably tartar. The first time I just went in and started eating it and you're mixing all that sugar in, but a little different experience just letting it kind of hang in there. Ooh, that's tart. There's some tartness. So I would ask, hmm. in its current form Ooh. of the of the pairings, <laughs> what was your favorite or most kind of like eye-opening? Honestly, I think the um, tropical kettle sour with the Sour Patch Kids, personally, for me, hmm. like I'm kind of realizing that like <clears throat> I wasn't getting like the sweet canceling I was getting like, well, not really tart amplifying though, but um, I was getting the tartness from both the sweet tarts and, or the Sour Patch Kids, as well as still tasting the tartness from the, the Kettle Sour. So maybe the so, only one that seemed kind of complimentary. Kind of, yeah, 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 amplification yeah, right, or right, right. dulling. Mm -hmm. I do really like the Sour Beer, Sour Patch Kids. The Imperial Stout was the most interesting. Mm -hmm. I was like, this one changed the most. Like. Mm. It really changed, like the sips that I had before, and then chocolate, and then having cool. it after. I was like, "How does this taste so different?" Um, mm. That was the most interesting one. Mm -hmm. It's hard to pick because I just don't love candy corn at all, but I really like the bee sting. Mm. So that one, I'm like, "Yeah, I love bee sting, but I really <laughs> hate candy corn." Candy corn is so candy corn ruins everything. Like, <laughs> Ooh, man, <laughs> coming back to bee sting as it's warmed up a little bit. It's kind of like a very creme brulee-ish, kind of like a cooked yeah. honey to it, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I would say my favorite pairing or most eye-opening, as I predicted, I like this Butterfinger Ha Ha Pearl. It's like there's just something about not putting it up against a dark chocolate yeah. porter or a stout That's or something. That's surprising too, yeah. mm -hmm. that it That was that kind it of worked. fun. I was surprised with how much like of the hop bitterness I tasted on the finish of that beer after having a really sweet... <clears throat> Buttery Butterfinger. <laughs> <laughs> so from the haunted table of beer and candy pairings, five beers up, five beers down, five treats up, five treats down. Big shout out to Aaron and Arbiter for having us. Congratulations again. Thank you. Shout out to Abby for leaving work to come hang out at brewery and eat candy. If you have beer and candy pairings that you know work, we want to know about it. Leave that in the comments below if you have some that you want to see us try next year. Maybe we'll make this a, a haunted Arbiter tradition. A happy Halloween. Be safe on your tricks or treats. Like and subscribe. Do us, Take do us, us on social. Do, do us all a, the things. Yeah, do us a treat. Like, subscribe, and tag us. We want to see what's happening at your beer-soused Halloween party. Yes. <laughs>